When the Yankees took the field August 3rd, 1979, home plate was left open in tribute to a captain, and everyone watching remembers that sight. Welcome back once again on the DraftKings Yankees pregame. On Monday, it will be 41 years since that game, which took place the day after legendary catcher Thurman Munson was killed in a plane crash in his native Ohio. He's never been forgotten by fans or by those who knew him, like current Red Sox bench coach Jerry Naren. As a rookie in 1979, Naren was Munson's backup, and he was the first Yankee to go behind the plate following the tragedy. Earlier today, he reflected on that experience on Munson himself as well in a talk with Chris Sheeran. Coach Jerry Naren uh, with the Red Sox uh, was with the Yankees back in 1979 when Thurman Munson passed away. Uh, Coach, just uh, take us through that day when you found out uh, on August 2nd, 41 years ago. It seems impossible that it's that long ago. No, well, for one thing, no way it seems that long. It seems like just yesterday. But uh, we had an off day, and uh, Ron Davis and I had rented a house over in New Jersey. We were living together, and Catfish Hunter called about 4.35 o'clock that afternoon, I think. And... Uh, just gave us the news and it was just unbelievable that, that could have happened. The next day, August 3rd, you all played and, and before the game, uh, you were the last player to go out onto the field. Can you just take us through that moment, what it was like in the stands, what it was like for the players and what it was like for you? Well, Mr. Steinbrenner came down to the, to the clubhouse in the afternoon and gave us an idea of what the night would be like and what they wanted to do to, as a tribute to Thurman. and. Uh, we were going to take the field for the national anthem. Uh, it was the first time the Yankees had stood out in front of the dugout for a national anthem, but they, he, he said uh, he wanted me to stay at the dugout, leave home plate vacant, and uh, he thought that'd be a great tribute. Everybody expected a moment of silence, but it ended up being a, a, about a 15-minute standing ovation. The fans were just awesome for Thurman, the tribute they gave him, and uh, and one thing Mr. Steinbrenner said, you stand next to Yogi, make sure uh, you're next to him, and he'll let you know exactly when to go out. And it got so long after a while, Yogi said, if you don't go out to home plate, we're going to be here all night. So it, it took about 15, 20 minutes. I think Yogi was right in his uh, in his saying that because you probably would have been there all night. Yeah, um, Yogi so was right about everything he said. <laughs> <laughs> And what was what was the rest of that season like for you? Uh, you know, you're a rookie. You're 23 years old. How was that? It was difficult for all of us. You lose somebody. It's like losing somebody in your family, but really the head of the family. When Thurman was the captain, he had been there for, from uh, the late 60s, and uh, you know, from uh, built the club back up to world championship team again. And uh, uh, being the leader, everybody looked to him, and it's like losing somebody in your family. And uh, you know, Bobby Mercer had just come back, and Bobby had been with the Yankees in the 60s when Thurman came up. And they, they were both excited to be back together again, and it was probably harder on Bobby than it was anybody. And then on the uh, Monday night game when Bobby got the walk-off hit, that was just awesome for Bobby to do that. And, and how did this experience in that season, especially in your rookie year, shape the rest of your career? How did, how did that uh, experience uh, shape it? Uh, well, just being on those clubs in the 70s, for one thing, being with the Yankees in the 70s, I thought every club in baseball was like that, where it was all about winning or else, you know, <laughs> Mr. Steinbrenner was, uh, was pretty awesome about that. But uh, uh, I don't know if I was ever nervous in a game again, like I was that night, you know, it was it was just a, a sad night and just a nervous time for me to be playing. And uh, uh, but the rest of the season, you know, everybody tried to grind it out, but they knew it was going to be a difficult road the next couple months. Now, you try to honor Thurman as much as you can, and on Players Weekend, uh, you had Thurm's caddy on the back of your uh, jersey. How, how did that come about? <laughs> yeah. How did that come about, and, and, and what's the story behind that? Well, that's a little bit of tribute, I think, to everybody that was a backup catcher for Thurman over those years. <laughs> uh, but I just thought, you know, I, I, to put Thurm's caddy being the 40th year that you know, of his passing, and uh, I didn't know a lot of people knew about that, but uh, I, that was just my small way of having a tribute to him. And what was your relationship like with Munson, Jerry? Uh, it, it was good. You know, I, my first spring training with the Yankees was 76. I came up and uh, he dogged me about wanting to take his job. And I said, yeah. And he got in the batting cage and was uh, working on his batting practice. And he says, well, let me practice on my foul tip. So I thought he was just messing. And the first one I'm telling you, he foul tipped it right into my mask. And he just <laughs> died laughing. So it was pretty good. Uh, you know, he helped me with some pitching and that type thing and catching and the whole bit. And uh being a veteran club, we had a lot of guys that, you know, I really had tried to help rookies along the best they could. 
And what lessons did he teach you that you took throughout your entire career? Well, for one thing, he told me when Billy came back that year to be the manager, he said, if Billy's ever mad at you, he said, just go ahead and hit him before he sucker punches you. He, that was probably the best advice. But he was kidding. He laughed about that, too. And uh, he said Billy couldn't hit a curveball. So anytime you have any doubt, just call a curveball. But uh, uh, being with Thurman, uh, you know, he, he was the ultimate competitor. 